Hello and welcome to another edition of TV30, a production of the NTN and the Government Information Service. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and with me, I have two very special guests. We have Pastor Andrew Feely and author Stephen M. Lambert, who is the chairman of the Year of the Bible 2020 Committee. We will be discussing specifically the book launch of Year of the Bible 2020 and beyond. Gentlemen, welcome to TV30. Thank you for joining me today. Yes, thank you very thank much. You. Yes. Um, just a brief introduction. Tell us a little bit about yourself. So we can start with Pastor Sealy and then we will go on to you, Mr. Lambert. Okay. My name is Andrew Sealy. And uh, currently I'm the assistant pastor at the Gozele Church of the Nazarene. And uh, for the year of the Bible 2020, we started preparing. But because of COVID, things came to sort of a screeching halt. And so we decided to put a little booklet together to really let people understand, know, maybe remember some of what we had started doing. And so today we are getting ready to launch this booklet. It's called Year of the Bible 2020 and Beyond. Okay. And that's why we're here today. All right. And uh, you, Mr. Lambert? Yes. Um, yeah, my name is Stephen Lambert. I'm a Bible teacher. Um, I'm the chairman of the Year of the Bible Committee. Uh, what we have done so far is since we launched in um, 2020, January 2020, mm -hmm. We, have, of course, we have made some progress, although because of COVID, we had to kind of, you know, things went a bit slow. But we have um, put everything in, the, in a booklet form. Um, a number of offers, well, of course, um, Reverend Ampadu wrote, um, we have um, John Robert Lee, mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Celia and myself. We wrote on a number of issues, and, um, you know, we really want people to know more about God, know more about what pastors think, and um, to get to know more about the love of God. Why do you think it is important for people to know the Bible, know the love of God? Okay. Well, the thing is this. Um, you need to know about God whilst you are on the earth. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people um, come into the world and it, there's literally just like what it says on their, their tombstone some people's tombstone born and so did mm. died and so and so did okay but there is more to it than that uh people have a purpose we, we all have a purpose but we need within our lifetime to find out what our purpose is and of course as you read the bible you get to know more about god you get to know the person of, of, of jesus you become a better individual and that's what we need in the society right now do you think it is relevant in today's culture to know the Bible, to have a relationship with God? And uh, do you believe that it is important to promote the Bible? Okay. Um, <coughs> when I was 14 years old, at, um, as a student at St. Mm -hmm. Mary's College, um, we had those little, um, it, was, it was sort of a, in um, comic form. They had little strips. And it talked about, you know, accepting Jesus in. So I, I did that. Mm -hmm. And I literally felt he actually came in. I felt a difference, you know. Um, the Bible is such a, a, a wonderful thing. Um, I remember even as, I mean, I, I got into this thing so seriously that at the age of 19, I was uh, teaching um, uh, principals of secondary schools, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, grown-ups and uh, all of that, you know. So, I mean, and over the years I've learned more and more, and I, I think I've, I, it has made me a better person. Okay. Um, okay. Personally, I have been able to, um, I think, I may, because of my knowing about God, knowing the scriptures, I think I've made a difference in St. Lucia. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, let me ask you that same question. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> do you believe that in today's culture, especially for our young people, that um, knowing the Bible is relevant? And do you believe that one should promote it? Okay, I would say it is even more than relevant. It is basic instructions mm -hmm. before leaving earth. And uh, we as <coughs> individuals, as humans, we have been put on earth by the Creator. 
and we are here for a purpose, like uh, Brother Lam said. Mm -hmm. And uh, that purpose is what really makes life real, authentic, you know, what it is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Because you, if you live this life without knowing your purpose or why you are here, chances are you just coast along and you find yourselves doing all kinds of wrong things. Mm -hmm. And in today's society, I think it is very relevant for the Bible to be introduced to our young people, for example, because so many of our young people are going astray. Mm -hmm. And the Bible will be like a compass, a chart to help them navigate their way through life and uh, make society a better place because People talk about the crime and violence and everything, but it is individuals who get involved in these things who create that kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So if you have <coughs> people who are more aware of their purpose in life, mm -hmm. people who recognize that they can make a difference, then I think the society benefits overall. I remember when I attended um, secondary school, it was a fashion statement to have the Bible, not the Bible, the Testament, the mm. Blue Testament, okay, yeah. in your back pocket. And um, <clears throat> we had the young men reading it. Not yes. sure if they understood what they were reading, but they were reading it. Mm -hmm. My question is, um, is, is there a contradiction now, though, between the Old and New Testament? Because they, they seem to be saying different things. So okay. help us understand it a little bit clearer. Okay. Yes, the New Testament and the Old Testament, um, whilst they don't contradict each other, mm -hmm. but they are dealing with different aspects of life between man and God. Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, um, which is before Christ, okay, it was a kind of a build-up to introduce Christ as the Savior, the Redeemer mm -hmm. of the world. And so we had things like... Um, sacrifices animal sacrifices and so on the blood being used you know as symbolic mm -hmm. of the coming savior who would shed his blood for all of mankind yeah. and in the new testament what we have is the kind of presentation of jesus and his church mm -hmm. because he says i will build my church but uh, the church is made up of people mm -hmm. And it is people whom he used to build that church. Okay, so he came, he became a man because he needed to be a man to be able to redeem mankind. God couldn't just stay up there and redeem mankind because of his own principles. God had given dominion to man over all the earth. And so when Adam sinned in the Old Testament mm -hmm. and uh, God wanted to redeem mankind, yeah. he had to find a way to get involved in the earth because Adam had the dominion. In other words, man had the dominion over the earth. And so God had to become a man in order to be able to take back that dominion and redeem mankind from his fallen state. So that's why Jesus, born of a virgin, he didn't have an earthly father though. And as a result, he was qualified to die on behalf of mankind so that he could forgive them of their sins and get them back on track to be in relationship with God. Thank you for that. We will take a quick break and when we get back, we are going to delve now into the book. Okay? Okay. Be right back. Oi, you are real life step on my toe. Well, do something about it. Because uh. I burst in the money. Hold on. If somebody tried to cross you, Hold and on. the mad thing start to take you, Hold no on. need for war over your lens because the police there to help you. Hold if a trouble start in this session, all right, no need for aggression. Hold on. We don't want no violence in the place. Control your temper, right. respect each other, don't let no trouble escalate, cause you know better. Control your temper, respect each other, 
A message from Mission Boy Studio 758 Acid Creations and the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Welcome back to TV30, a production of the Government Information Service and NTN. I am your host, Kendall Eugene, and uh, today we have two guests in the studio. We are discussing the book launch, Year of the Bible 2020 and Beyond. This is the book right here with the authors in studio with me, Pastor Andrew Seeley and uh, the chairman of the Year of the Bible 2020 committee, uh, Mr. Stephen M. Lambert. Um, the book, sir, we have four authors here. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, when I heard the title Year of the Bible, I actually expected to see a massive publication coming in about the size of an atlas. <laughs> Because uh, when, when I, I remember seeing my grandmother's Bible and, oh boy, that was the biggest turn off when I saw so many pages. Right. But okay. it is actually a nice, compact booklet. Um, is the book based on a certain um, book of the Bible, like, for example, John or one of the uh, apostles? How, what, what is the book based on? All right. Um, the book essentially, um, it has in it... Um, Articles written by um, different, well, of course, S uh, Reverend Seth Ampadu, mm -hmm. Elder John Robert Lee, Pastor Andrew Seeley, and myself. Now, why they wrote articles, and I also had written one or two other articles, I felt that um, there was need for me to uh, write something, a, a, a brief commentary. Mm -hmm. I don't know, some may find it's not brief enough or too brief, <laughs> but um, a brief commentary on the book of um, John. Okay. Now, years ago, actually, about 22 years ago, I sat at my table at home. Um, I was babysitting my, my, my daughter at the time. And, of course, I, I, I love reading the, the book of John, mm -hmm. especially um, if you have a red-letter Bible. It's even sweeter. So, you know, I've enjoyed it, and I kept reading it all the time. But one, one Saturday, you know, while I was reading, um, I, sent, um, I sensed a fragrance that I've never, ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. And it actually, it hovered over my, by my chair. So I was sitting at, by the table. Uh, my daughter was playing around. Mm -hmm. And then just above me, I'm just taking a, a, a wonderful scent. Um, I, I would even say it, it, was, it was a heavenly scent. And um, I never experienced that in my life, and I've never experienced it since. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering to myself, what, what is going on? Why, why is just by my side, on my right-hand side, and just above me there? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, and, you know the, the Holy Spirit gave me some insight. He, he said that that was Jesus there. You know, you, he gave you that, me that inspiration that it was Jesus next to me. And so I've always had a love for the book of John. And so mm -hmm. when, this, um, um, when this whole idea came about for a year of the Bible 2020, I decided I would... Um, share some of my experiences, you know, with regards to what I understood from the book of John. Okay. And um, especially chapters 14 to 17. Now, let me just say... Why those chapters? Well, uh, here. <laughs> well, that's a good question. Um, after I'd experienced that, about um, five years after, mm -hmm. I went to um, the house of um, um, Leeton John, Dr. Sir, Sir Leeton John. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Sir Leeton Thomas. Thomas Fifth. Um, He's my wife's second cousin. But of course, you know, because of the age difference, we call him Uncle Leeton and, mm -hmm. and, um, and Auntie Marjorie. Marjorie. So then, whilst I was there, I met with his brother-in-law, who is Dr. Clark. And, you know, I spoke to him and, you know, we, you know, we spoke well and then religious things came up and I told him about that. And he says, but, you know, son, I believe you because I'm not reading a book by a priest um, which says that Jesus actually told that priest that um, he will reveal himself to people that read the book of John, especially the chapters 14 to 17. Mm -hmm. You know, so I see that, you know, I mean, that was confirmed to me that here this is um, something that should be shared with the rest of the population. Okay. You know, and now, that's how it came about. <coughs> we have um, various versions of the Bible. And yes. As a Bible, you say a Bible teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, why are there so many different versions of the Bible? Isn't that confusing? Well, the thing is this. Um, 
when I, I, I in fact what I did was this I, I took the the from the um, I took it from the King James Version. Mm -hmm. Now, of <coughs> course, you can follow everything which is in the King James Version in the Catholic Bible. Yeah. There are just little differences here and there. Um, sometimes you, you find in those um, different um, translations, um, certain persons um, would, would put in, in their, their own slant on things, you know? Right. Um, but I've found over the years that both the Catholic Bible and the, um, the King James Version are are very good translations of the Bible. And that's why, you know, I mean, that I refer to it. I've yes, yes okay. uh, very accurate. So that's why I was able to use mm -hmm. the King James Version and anybody can follow it in the Catholic Bible. Pastor Sila, I'm going to ask you a question. Probably the younger um, members of your church <laughs> ask you often. Um, do you believe people really go to heaven? Sure. The, the Bible makes it very clear that uh, there is a heaven to gain mm -hmm. and a hell to literally shun. And uh, Jesus came and then he spoke a lot about the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. which um, he came to prepare men for. And even in his death on the cross, he was crucified between these two thieves and one of them recognize the deity of Jesus, who he was. Mm -hmm. And then he, at the last minute, called on Jesus to say, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus promised him there and then, today you will be with me in paradise. And uh, the apostle Paul spoke about being absent from the body mm -hmm. and being present with the Lord. Jesus also spoke about, um, in his prayer to his father, he prayed that his followers would get to be where he is, and he is up in heaven with, with the father. So there's ample evidence that um, the people go to heaven. If you read the book of Revelation as well, mm -hmm. in Revelation you find <coughs> that um, big crowds are seen in heaven, and eventually they come back to earth with the Lord Jesus Christ to fight the battle of Armageddon and so on. So there is ample evidence that people go to heaven if they repent and accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Why is that most important? Okay, because you see, God is a holy God and sin cannot really, I mean, Sin and God cannot really be in the same place, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So what you find is that Jesus came to redeem mankind from sin. And he promised that he was going to prepare a place for us. That is those who accept his sacrifice mm -hmm. as their own. He was going to prepare a place for them so that where he is, they would be there also. Okay? So unless you accept the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf, yeah. you cannot have a part in his, in his kingdom. And that is where um, a lot of people lose out because they have objections about who Jesus is and what mm -hmm. Jesus did and what have you, and so they reject him. And rejecting Jesus means that you are actually saying you don't want to be or to have any part with God Correct. in his kingdom. And uh, that is the sad thing. If people really understood that Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for their sins, I believe a lot of people, a lot more people, would respond to his message of love and accept him as their savior. We're here with uh, our very special guest this afternoon with uh, TV30. Mr. Stephen Lambert and Pastor Andrew Silly. We will take a break and get back with more. And when we return, we chat a little bit more about Year of the Bible 2020 and beyond. The launch is coming. We'll let you know when. The Department of Finance has introduced the Electronic Government Procurement System, EGP. The EGP system has many benefits for stakeholders involved in government procurement. And government seeks to adopt a strategic approach to its purchasing process. Electronic government procurement improves efficiency of procurement and enhances data capture. 
The EGP is innovative and will automate the sequence from notification, receiving and evaluation of submissions to final contract award. It improves communication between vendors and the government agencies, provides greater transparency and builds confidence in the vendor community through increased access to information. To participate, vendors, suppliers and contractors must register on the electronic government procurement platform. EGP, improving efficiency and transparency in the acquisition of goods, books and services. Welcome back to TV 30 with my guests in studio. We have a Mr. Stephen M. Lambert. He is the chairman for the Year of the Bible 2020 committee. And I also have Pastor Andrew Seeley here with me. Discussing the Year of the Bible 2020 and beyond, the book is here. Um, launching. Yes. When will the book be available and where? Okay. The, the book is available from um, all members of the um, Year of the Bible Committee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are looking at um, um, a number of um, outlets. Uh, we just put in some things into place, so mm -hmm. we will have that known, let's say, by tomorrow, God willing. Churches. And of course, they are going to be available at all the churches because we have starting to distribute them to them. them. So you'll be able to get it from your pastor, your priest, and everything should be all right. Yeah. Excellent. Um, Mr. Lambert, the Bible talks about uh, the world of the spirit. So let's just explain that for individuals who may not understand what it means. And mm -hmm. can that be substantiated? Do you believe it can be? OK, the thing is this. Um, <coughs> at present, we have. Um, but we have them, paranormal psychologists and these people. Mm -hmm. they, they investigate houses that are haunted. Mm -hmm. And um, when they put in their cameras there and they, they, they leave the place, they put their cameras in there, they're able to pick up movements. They're able to see that, you know, that um, there, there are certain forces in that house which are moving plates, chairs, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we know that to ourselves that there are spirits that were in the haunted house or, or inhabit the haunted houses. But the, the, main, the, main, um, the main source for us to really believe in is the Word of God, eh? which, which actually clearly talks about spirits, evil, and all of these kind of things. Um, and I can just give you one of my, my own experience. Mm -hmm, please. I went to, um, to, to purchase um, an item at a particular um, shop. And, uh, you know, so I... I kindly asked the person that I wanted that product. Um, they looked at me as if, you know, I mean, they don't want to respond to me. Then I asked him again, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I, I saw that his, um, his visage, his, his physical um, features, his, his, um, his facial features changed, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at the man and I'm seeing here like he has a hatred, you know, in his eyes for me. And I'm, and I'm looking again and I'm seeing that he actually has there's, a, there's a, a sort of a spirit on him. I'm looking at that and I'm saying, but that's the first time I've ever seen that in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, that the guy, and, and why is he's, um, the, the, I'm seeing the actual spirit, but there's no um, voice of the spirit, but I can see the action, the, the facial movements of that spirit, because like you could see through him. But he was snarling at me, roaring, you know, mm. at me. And, and it's like, as he's roaring, the man himself, He's taken on that kind of feature too, you know, okay. like a roaring at me, you know. So, I mean, I suppose um, if I, well, the Apostle John, like the, the angel had told him, marvel not at that, but I marveled seriously when I saw that because first time in my life I've ever seen that. But we know too, and of course, um, people like um, uh, Father Lambert St. Rose has shown us clearly mm -hmm. that there are people that are actually involved in witchcraft and all things, and, and they actually spirits attached to these people okay so we know to ourselves that there is the spirit world mm -hmm. and uh, you know it can be substantiated i don't know if you've ever been to one of those things where the the the, the catholics call it um, um uh, exorcisms mm -hmm. if you've seen the I've, movie. I've seen movies with right <laughs> um, there's also the well the, the the pentecostal pastors call it deliverance deliverance yes where spirits are taken out from people and if you already see that mm -hmm. you will know to yourselves that hey these things really exist 
we ha we've seen videos of them um, yes and of course you have the people who are non-believers would tell yes. you that all of that is an act and yes you clearly do not subscribe to no no no, being no, an no, act. no 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 these things are these things are real mm -hmm. and um, you know i mean um you see one of the, the things is that when you you um i know that our friend um, um the politician um um George Odlum used to quote uh, from Paradise Lost. Mm -hmm. Now, in Paradise Lost, Milton, Milton actually went into the mind of Satan. Eh? And in the writing, he actually says, you know, that the heart and the mind of Satan ready to destroy God's people, mm -hmm. God's creation. Yeah. And, you know, when we come to realize that, hey, we realize, boy, I have an enemy out there who really wants to destroy me. He doesn't want me to get to heaven mm -hmm. because he can never get there again. Uh, somebody was telling me once, you know that, but you know, I mean, um, um, God will forgive the Satan. No, there's no more forgiveness for Satan. It's because um, Satan and the angels, they, they sinned individually. Whereas in our case, um, Adam was the one who sinned. So, he, um, you know, he was yeah. the one who, who, who caused that, you know. Okay. So, so that's the whole that's thing. But I mean, we can go further and further. Yeah, we can, we can. Yes, but, yes. Um, the book now, uh, coming uh, back into yes. it, um, yeah. I'm sure it has great teachings in there. A lot of literature that one can um, consume and, of course, learn from. Mm -hmm. What do you want to accomplish with the writings in the book? Well, we are told essentially that um, once you want to hide something from, well, somebody they say black people, <laughs> see, somebody they say St. Lucians, you yeah. put it in the book. Mm -hmm. I don't subscribe to that because we have two Nobel laureates and yes. these guys are scholarly and I know a lot of St. Lucians read. Mm -hmm. What we want them to do is to read the contents of this book. Um, a lot of what those pastors, uh, those preachers have written, mm -hmm. they will not normally sometimes preach about them, but in writing, I, I, I realize that they, they're even a little more free yeah. with their thoughts. So I think it's, it's, it's a fantastic book. I, I, I've put in there a lot of my own thoughts and my understandings of, you know, the scriptures and over the years. So, you know, I, I think it's a wonderful book. Read it, consume it, you know, and I mean, buy it for your family members. Share it with the family. Yes. Pastor, what about you? Oh, well, um, being a contributor to the book, I... I, I, I can't say anything negative about it, mm -hmm. but uh, I, in fact, I want to encourage people to read this because um, it begins by discussing the Bible, what is it, and there was the significance of the Bible and so on. Mm -hmm. And then in there we have a variety of topics. Like one of the things I touched on there was uh, the issue of abortion mm -hmm. and uh, the, the article ended with um, this quote, abortion equals one dead, two wounded. Now I think that is uh, like a great opening for discussion. Mm -hmm. One dead, two wounded, and how is that possible? What does that mean and so on? And uh, I think that uh, people who read this thing, you know, can really begin a, a dialogue, a discussion about, you know, because right now, I mean, abortion is a, a big thing. A lot of people, a lot of money is being made Wonder. through abortion. Yes, yes. And young people are being enticed into practicing the, this thing. And uh, I go into a little depth in there, uh, explaining the, the people who really introduced this thing to on a large scale, what mm -hmm. were their motives and so on. So. This book is, I think, uh, sort of an opener for dialogue, discussion. People can r read it, have, maybe they would have different points of view. You would see it one way, that one would see it another way, way. Correct. And then you can have a dialogue about the, the issues. And who knows? Excellent. Life could be changed. Hmm. Well, folks, the book is available. Uh, church members, they have it. And you could also contact the committee members and uh, find out how you can get your book. I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Stephen M. Lambert and Pastor Andrew Silly for joining me on TV20 today. Yes. Gentlemen, and good luck with the book. Folks, thank you. that's all the time we have for today with TV30. I am your host, Kendall Eugene. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you next time.